For December 10th, 2020's review, I want to talk about SpaceX. Um, if you don't know, SpaceX is a US-based private aerospace company. It's headed by Elon Musk, who is known for his electric car company, Tesla. And what SpaceX basically does is they build rockets and they launch things into space. Now, the thing that makes SpaceX unique is the fact that their rockets are reusable. So the rocket's going to send a payload up into space, then the rocket is going to come down and under the power of its own rocket engines, and with landing legs, it'll actually touch down on the ground. And these uh, are designed to be reused up to 10 times. And I think uh, some of the rockets that they've been flying have flown at least six times each, some of them, maybe seven. So if you're launching rockets and reusing them and everyone else is throwing every part of the rocket away each launch, you're going to be able to offer access to space for a price much cheaper. It's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, for other companies to compete against you. Now, what does this have to do with geopolitics? Before SpaceX came along, companies like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Boeing dominated America's aerospace industry, and they kind of created a cozy monopoly, and they worked together. And as a matter of fact, now Lockheed and Boeing have combined to make up the United Launch Alliance. Before SpaceX came along, uh, you know, companies could get away with charging large amounts for access to space. And there was no need to waste money on innovation if they could just keep charging this huge amount of money and there was no competition. But now there is competition. Now, what do you think United Launch Alliance, you know, Boeing and Lockheed, what do you think they did when SpaceX started reusing their rockets and driving the costs down per launch? What do you think they did? Do you think they created their own reusable rocket? That's what you would think, isn't it? But that's not what they did. Instead, what they did was they used their large lobbying influence in Washington. They used legal maneuvering, and they even used smear campaigns through the media to attack and undermine SpaceX. Now, I guess Elon Musk is as good at doing business with these sort of people as he is building better rockets than they do. And the problem with these companies aren't that their engineers are, are inferior or anything like that. These are amazing engineers. The problem is the company is owned by financiers who own many companies and they don't actually care about the industry any of these companies are involved in. They're interested in squeezing every dollar possible out of them. And if you can squeeze dollars out and keep those dollars instead of reinvesting it in something like innovation, that's what they'll do. And they create monopolies and they crush startups whenever possible, specifically so they can continue doing this. So before SpaceX came along, there would be programs that NASA would hand them and they would drag their feet for years and years and years, way behind schedule, way over budget, and many times they would never even produce the things that they were asked to. Now SpaceX is here. And if you follow the, the pace of innovation at SpaceX, it's breakneck. It's something we've never seen before from an aerospace company. Just to give you an example, this is this is Starship. This is their new launch system. So as revolutionary as Falcon 9 is, they're already moving to this launch system called Starship. It'll be fully reusable. Falcon 9, the first stage is reusable. The fairings are also reusable. Everything else gets thrown away. For Starship, absolutely everything will be reusable. And this will drive costs down even further. Not to mention that when Starship is fully developed, it'll be the largest, most powerful rocket ever made. Now, I just showed you how established aerospace companies in America are dealing with SpaceX. They're not dealing with it very well. What about around the rest of the world? What is what is the multipolar world that's emerging? What do they say to this? Well, Russia's Roscosmos is working on their own version of a reusable rocket based on the same proven techniques that SpaceX has used to successfully reuse their rockets. Even China has companies working on rockets that take off vertically, uh, send payloads into space, and land vertically, just like SpaceX's Falcon 9. And now with the development of Starship, which you see right here, and by the way, those are people right there. That's how big this is. This is 
this is basically the second stage that a much larger booster is going to help put into orbit. And even this is gargantuan. It's about 15 or 16 stories tall. And they just test flew a prototype of this yesterday. And I'm going to show you footage of this as I'm talking. Just remember this. What it does is it takes off vertically. When it gets to its apogee, it's the, the maximum altitude that they were looking for, it'll turn itself over like this, and then it'll belly flop back down. And what it's trying to do is reduce its velocity as much as possible through this belly flop maneuver. And then right before it reaches the ground, the rocket engines reignite and kick the back out, and rocket engines are facing the ground so that it can slow down and land now. I don't want to spoil it, but as you're going to see here, it didn't land successfully. It, it, it crashed. But it came so close, and this is the first time they've ever tried anything like this before. So if you, if you know anything about SpaceX and their team, uh, coming this close on the first try is actually incredible. And for sure, they're going to figure it out, and they're going to get it right, if not the next time, the time after that, for sure. So what, what I'm basically trying to say is I'm trying to show you that, uh, you know, the U.S. right now has a big problem because countries like China are competing by innovating and out-competing the U.S. economically. The U.S. does all these tricks. You know, they have military force, they have soft power, hard power, and they use all these kind of shady techniques to, to keep power over other countries. Now that countries are innovating and building and expanding, these tricks don't work anymore because in order for them to work, the U.S. has to have its own economic fundamentals in order, and they, and they do not. They're not able to compete because they're too over-dependent on these tricks. And now, even in the United States, there's companies like SpaceX and even Tesla, which is heading off against the auto industry. These are companies that are shaking things up. And what we can hope is that these companies end up displacing these old entrenched monopolies and that the U.S. can play a more constructive role amongst other nations rather than constantly trying to stand over everyone else. And so I think that's... Uh, that's kind of what I wanted to show you with this, with this up, with this daily review. I want to show you that even in America, these special interests that have been promoting such a toxic foreign and domestic policy for the United States, they're facing challenges from all directions. And the thing that we all have to do as 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 people in this world is we have to divest from these old corporate monopolies. And you, you see them everywhere. I mean, like even here in Thailand, if you go into a store, you will see products on the shelves from these gigantic corporations in the U.S., like PepsiCo, for example. The people that own PepsiCo don't care about sugary, fizzy water. They, they care about squeezing every dollar out of that corporation. And all the profits that they make, they put into think tanks that engineer wars and help exploit people all around the globe. It's, it's, the, it's a fact. It's truth. And we have to divest from them. We have to put our money into local companies if possible, and at least companies that are, have a more constructive, uh, purpose-driven business model than one that's purely driven by, by just profits. And now I think that's what distinguishes SpaceX from Boeing and Lockheed. Elon Musk is obsessed with making human beings multiplanetary, getting people onto Mars, basically. He's obsessed with it. It's all he talks about when he talks about rockets. And it shows in how SpaceX is run and the, the pace of innovation and their focus. It's They're making profits. Of course, they have to to stay in business, but they're driven by purpose first and the profits come second and the profits come because they're innovating and they're out competing everybody else. So it's just something to think about, about how the unipolar world is kind of fading into the multipolar world and how even companies in America are playing a role in this transition. And it's kind of a little ray of hope that maybe one day the U.S. can, can be a constructive uh, contributor to multipolarism eventually. So we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, if you're a patron and you made this video possible, thank you very much. And if you're watching this when I publish it publicly, please like and share it if you thought it was useful. 
consider subscribing to my channel on YouTube because it helps the channel grow and I really appreciate that. Check the video description below for references and also ways you can help support my work like through Patreon. If you're a patron, you can contribute monthly and you also are going to get input on future projects and you're also going to get content and benefits in return. And for everyone who has been helping in every way, thank you very much. And as always, thank you for watching.